Okay, so we will now move on to the third vital sign, which is the respiration. So we're through with the temperature, pulse, we will now move on to respiration. So prior in the assessing the res respiratory rate, we also have to assess for skin, mucous membrane, color, because the skin and then the mucous uh, membrane can tell us a problem with the lungs. For example, to mga fingertips is nagkakaroon ng bluish discolorization. There's a problem with the lungs. May, may, may problema ang pasyente natin when it comes in the oxygenation. Ano pa? The mucous membrane sa may uh, gawin, gawin dito sa may pisngi. Okay? The buccal area. Kapag ka mayroong discolorization dyan, bluish discolorization, that is already a cyanosis. Okay? What else? Position ng client natin. So, kung ang pasyente natin is mas comfortable siya in a supine position, hayaan na po natin sila. Okay, huwag natin paupuin. Kung ang pasyente natin is comfortable na nakasupine position siya, naka-side-lying ang mga pasyente, hayaan natin sila in that position. Next, any signs of cerebral anorexia, inote din natin yun. Okay, next one, uh, the chest movement. Okay, isa yan sa indicator natin na humingi nga ang pasyente natin. Next, activity tolerance. Ang pasyente ba natin is mabilis mapagod? Okay, lalo na sa mga obese na mga pasyente natin, overweight. Okay, konting lakad lang dito. Okay, konting hapbang. Minsan napapagod na sila at inihingal na. So, check din natin yun. What else? Chest pain. Meron bang pananakit din sa kanilang baga? Dysnia or difficulty in breathing. Nahihirapan ba ang pasyente natin na huminga? And lastly, will be the medications that may affect the respiration of our client. So after that, we also need to determine the policies and procedure in a, in a, in a facility we are in a facility we are working or do sa mga natin because as I have said, different hospital has a different protocols, different procedures, different policies. What else? We also have to determine the client's record for the medications because there are certain medications that may uh, alter the respiratory rate. Pwedeng pabilisin, pwede rin pabagali ng respiration. Okay, so after the assessment, we move to the planning. So for the planning, we will uh, just uh, assemble the equipment that we're going to need. The equipment and supplies. And usually in this procedure, hindi naman tayo rito gagamit ng any equipment or ano ba, any equipment or supplies maliban sa watch natin. Okay, so sinabi ko na sa inyo kung anong watch ang kailangan natin. Kailangan meron niyang second hand at hindi tayo tumatanggap ng digital watch. Okay, that is a big no-no. Ngayon, kung ang case po natin is pedia, kung case po natin is pedia, it's really hard to assess the, resp the respiratory rate of the pedia. So, in that case, nagamit tayo ng stethoscope. Okay? So, instead of doing the observation or inspection and palpation, ang gagamitin natin for the pedia is what? Auscultation. Okay? So, what else? Uh, for the implementation, again, GIVE, okay? uh, greet, your greet your client and prior greet your client, introduce, verify, and then explain uh, what you're going to do and how your client will participate in that procedure. Then again, observe uh, infection control procedure, wash your hands before and after any procedure. And then provide uh, for client privacy, kung meron tayong privacy curtain, pakilagay ang privacy curtain. Kung wala, gumamit tayo kung ano ang meron sa atin. For example, top sheet o yung uh, kumot ng pasyente natin, we can use that. What else? Uh, place the client in a comfortable position or appropriate position. Next, observe. Again, observation ang gagamitin natin dito and palpation. Observe and palpate and count for the respiratory rate. Uh, Di ba sabi ko sa inyo kanina, okay, after mong makuha ang pulse rate ng client natin, ilalagay natin yung hands ng client natin over the abdomen. Usually in the epigastric uh, region, sa so may taas baba ng uh, sternum. Okay? Place mo rin yung kamay ng pasyente natin after taking the pulse. Bakit? This is actually a trick. Kung ang gagamitin natin is observation, you are just looking at the rise and fall of the chest, pwedeng makonsyos yung pasyente natin. Pwedeng isipin ng pasyente is kinukuhanan yung, kinukuha yung respiration ko. So, pag nakonsyos, nakonsyos ang pasyente natin, ang problema dyan is what? Okay? Pwede nilang kontrolin yung kanilang respiration. Pwedeng bumilis, pwede ring bumagal and that is the problem. So kung ang gagawin natin is after taking the pulse, inilagay natin yung kamay dito sa may epigastric part, epigastric region ng abdomen ng pasyente, they might think kinukuha na lang ako nito ng pulse. Pero truth is, ang kinukuha natin sa kanila is the respiration. 
Okay, so you have to count the respiratory rate for 60 seconds. Again, huwag tayo mag-shortcut ha. Huwag 15 seconds, huwag 30 seconds, tapos yung multiply mo lang yan by 4 or by 2. Okay, don't do that. Dapat full minute po tayo. Count for the inhalation and exhalation. Okay, inhalation or the inspiration. The exhalation or the expiration. Inhale. Exhale. That is considered as one respiration. Again, one inspiration, one expiration, that is considered as one respi res res respiration. Okay? So, a rise and fall of the chest or the abdomen. Rise, fall, one. Rise, fall, two. Rise, fall, three. Okay? So, so, so in, in that way, we can assess the respiratory rate of our client. What else? We can also observe for the chest, the rise and fall of the chest. Pwede rin natin doon makita yung kanilang respiration. What else? Shoulder. A rise and fall of the shoulder may indicate a respiration. Pero it's not really that accurate because there are some people, katulad ko, okay, uh, hindi naman ako, uh, pagka nag-inhale pagka nag pagka nag ako tsaka exhale, wala naman nagbabago doon sa my shoulder ko. So, hindi masyadong accurate kung gano'n ang gagawin mo. Pinaka-accurate pa rin sa lahat, okay, take the hands of your client, put it uh, in the epigastric region, okay, in the abdomen of your client, and then uh, i-feel ninyo yung rise and fall ng abdomen or the rise and fall of the chest. Yun ang pinaka-accurate. And then observe for the depth, the rhythm, and also the characteristic of the respiration. Observe mo, gano ba ka lalim? Okay, kasi ibang pasyente ang lalim pagka humihinga. In that case, may problema yung client natin. Okay? What else? Observe mo rin for the regular or irregularity with the rhythm. Ibang pasyente kasi, irregular yun. Okay? There's a problem dun sa may lungs ng pasyente natin. Ano pa? Observe din natin for the uh, lung sounds. Okay? Pwede ninyong marinig yung iba-ibang sounds sa may pasyente natin. Yung ibang client, <sighs> Ang gawin ang paghinga nila. Sometimes it produces like letter Z. Parang ganun. Parang inihika. That is wheezing. So there are different sounds. Yan, isa yan sa i-discuss natin dun sa skills natin. Okay? Isa rin yan sa paparinig ko sa inyo para maging familiar kayo ano-ano yung mga lang sounds na pwede natin marinig sa my client natin. Okay? So after taking the respiration, after observing the depth, the rhythm, the lung sounds, Okay, so, baba na natin. Okay, baba na natin yung kamay ng pasyente natin. And then, we can now write down the, the information na nakuha natin doon sa may tickler natin para hindi natin makalimutan. Okay, and then, evaluate natin uh, yung naging, uh, I mean, let's move on to the evaluation and documentation. So, document natin the, the pulse, uh, I mean, the respiratory rate, the depth, the rhythm, and even the sounds. And then, report natin dun sa may uh, clinical instructor natin or dun sa may nurse or kay doc okay, if there are some irregularities with the respiration. And then, last, uh, document natin yung naging observation natin sa client natin. Ilagay natin yung document natin yung dun sa may nurse's remark sheet. And that's it. Okay? So, once again, with regards dun sa my vital signs record sheet, ituturo ko yan in a separate video. Okay? Para mas maging familiar kayo sa ginagawa natin in the hospital, okay? So, that concludes for the third vital sign, which is the respiration. We will now move on to the vital sign, uh, I mean, the blood pressure. Okay, isa to sa medyo madugo na ginagawa ninyo and you need to master this one, okay? So, yeah, I guess that concludes for the third vital signs. If you have some question, okay, you can open your question dun sa may consultation time natin or dun sa may online uh, learning natin, okay? So, that's, that concludes the discussion for the respiration. Meron pa ba ako dadagdag? Um, again, kapag ka-pedia, gagamit po tayo ng stethoscope, okay? Auscultate natin yan. And if you wanted to be more uh, precise sa may lung sounds, auscultation din ang gagamitin natin, okay? Auscultation technique din ang gagamitin natin. Gagamit tayo ng stethoscope para mas marinig natin yung lung sounds. Okay, pag-aaralan natin yan, pagdating natin dun sa may assessment of the lungs. Okay? So, I guess that it. That's it. That concludes our discussion for the third vital sign. We will now move on for the fourth one, which is on another video. Okay? That's it, guys.